In this video, we're going to continue where we left off previously, and that is to use the Smart Extrude tool to extrude the legs on our Rhino model. We will also use the Spine tool to create the tail and look at the Bevel tool plus the Live Smooth feature. Let's get started now in the Select tool with Faces mode. Then I will brush select the faces I want to extrude. And I'll use my hotkey to come out of that particular view. Let's now right click and choose inset. Scrub to the right. I'll hit OK. I want to use the brush tool to finesse the shape a bit more. While I'm using the brush tool, I think I'm going to go ahead and pull the shoulders out a bit because as you can see in the reference image, they do bulge out quite a bit and it will widen the base of our extrusion. Let's now select the Smart Extrude tool. We have a few options to choose from in the Tool Options panel, mainly the Commit Extrusion option like we have with the Transform tool. We can also choose the extrude direction from the list menu here, whether it's free, along the normals, along a specific axis, or extrude along vertices or faces. Let's go ahead and choose normals. We can simply left mouse button click and drag. If we have free, it's just going to operate in screen space. Let's push that back up just a bit. And I'll hit enter instead of commit extrusion. When I click to drag, you can see it's already created new geometry here. We can hold down the shift key to rotate. Let's go back to free. Click and drag. If we want to scale this, we can right click and scale on the fly. So dragging to the left is going to scale inward. Dragging to the right while you right click is going to scale outward. The hotkey or buttons to remember are left click to move, right click to scale, and shift drag to rotate. So for a quick review, hold down the shift key and click and drag to rotate, left mouse click to move, and once again, right click and drag left or right to scale. So we'll go to a front view. And as you can see, the head is obstructing at least half of the leg, so I typically have to go into a perspective view. And I want to follow this profile here where the leg is really angling toward the center line, and then from the knee down, it's fairly straight. Okay, so I will switch tools for the moment. So I'm going to choose a transform tool. And I'm just going to scale along the Y axis in order to flatten that. And I'm going to rotate it. I'll hit Escape to drop the Transform tool. I can hit Spacebar and choose the Smart Extrude tool. This time I'm going to go back to the normal method. For the sake of time, I'm going to speed up the playback for the remainder of this video. Here, I'm just going to use split rings to add some additional loops and also add some geometry where the joints would typically be for animation purposes or better deformation. And from time to time, I'll use the brush tool to further massage the geometry and adjust the form slightly. Also, I can hold down the shift key while using it in order to relax or smooth under the brush. So we're back to using Smart Extrude. Here. 
Here I'm going back to vertices mode so that I can use the vertex alignment tool. And as you can see, I just flatten the bottom. So as you can see, I'm mainly at this point just tweaking the shape or the form with a brush tool. And I'm going to skip forward a bit after adding a little bit of geometry in the head region. Before I move on to the ears, I want to show two additional features of importance. One is beveling. The other is the Live Smooth feature in the Mesh menu. All you have to do is click on Sculpt Mesh and it will generate a copy in the Sculpt Workspace using the subdivision level that you choose. As you make edits to your modeling or Retopo Mesh, 3D Coat will update those changes to your Sculpt Mesh on the fly automatically. Let's now explore the Bevel tool. To bevel those edges, I can right mouse button click over the model and choose Bevel. Now in the pop-up panel, I can drag this slider to increase or decrease the width of the bevel, and I can choose how many segments I want in between. After I finish making the adjustments, I'll hit OK. And I can repeat the same process for the hooves. Once I've made my selection, I'll right click and choose Bevel in the center of the panel. Again, I'll hit OK. And I noticed that for some strange reason, it did not copy this time across the symmetry plane, but that's OK. We can just click on the Sim Copy icon in the Polygroup panel. The last thing we're going to work on in this video is the tail using the spine tool. I'll just select the polygons for the base of the tail in polygon select mode and I'll speed up the playback a bit. I'll select the spine tool and check add with spine. This first point I will pull it out a bit and with any new extrusion I can hit the new extrude button or the enter key and it will generate a new point as well as an extrusion. As I mentioned in a previous video, you can scale the points interactively and at any given time by hovering over the point and using your mouse wheel or the touch ring on your Wacom tablet. Once I'm done with the spine tool, I'll step out and use split rings to add some additional edge loops once I'm done with the split rings tool, I will go ahead and select the entire tail and then use the relax tool to smooth everything out. With the polygons for the tail selected, I'm going to move those faces to a separate retopo layer. I don't have to do this, but if I want to make any future edits to the body, I don't have to worry about copying the symmetry over and it messing with the geometry of the tail because there are so many vertices located in the same proximity. And that means symmetry snapping could cause a bit of a mess unnecessarily. With that, we will stop the video right here and pick up in the next one where we are going to conclude the series by working on the ears. So stay tuned and thank you for watching.